Scott's making an early start this morning. He's on the road to an animal charity he often works with, All Dogs Matter. They helped to rescue and rehome abandoned dogs here in London. And they've just let me know of four dogs that have just come into their shelter that are in a really terrible state. Hello. Hello, you four. Waiting for Scott is animal rescuer Sonia. Hello. Hi, baby. Hello, you. And the four new arrivals that were all saved from a local pound that could no longer house them. They all look horrific, don't they? Their fur is in patches and tatty or even non-existent on that little pom. I do you think we need to have a little look at her and see what's going on? It was very clear from the get-go that the Pomeranian was the one that was struggling the most. She's the one that's lost the most amount of fur. Uh, she looks in the worst condition. She's very thin. She's struggling. I can see well clearly the biggest problem here is her skin and the complete lack of hair. So this has been going on for a while. She's lost a huge amount of fur as a result. Who would let their dog turn into this? Into I mean, it's state. disgusting. It really shocks me to the core and to see a Pomeranian look like that. I just don't know how the people here do it and I don't know how their hearts don't break every day. She's also coming pregnant. Oh, you're joking. So, yes. And what happened to the puppy? The puppy didn't survive. The puppy wasn't even, it wasn't even a proper pup, so it wasn't even fully formed. And so, it's sickening, yeah. isn't it? Really upsets you, doesn't it, yeah. to see this? Mm. It's heartbreaking. Everyone gets, everyone gets upset. You can't help it. You wouldn't be human if you didn't get upset about something like that. Sorry. You're okay, we're gonna sort you out, hey? Eh? Don't we? Can we sort you out, hey? Eh? It's all right, oh, hello. Hello. Mm. Wow, they're affectionate little ones, aren't they? Come on. All right, well, what I think we need to do is mm -hmm. all these guys look like their conditions are quite manageable, but this little one clearly needs my help. Scott will now take the malnourished Pomeranian yeah. back to his Richmond practice. There you go. To find out Take just that. what is causing her dramatic Love hair you. loss. She's really stolen my heart, this yeah, little one. She... Say goodbye Aww. to Sonia. Bye bye, darling. We all get quite attached to the dogs down here. We might only spend a few days with them, but we, you know, we love them all as if they're our own, really. Okay. I never understand how people can be cruel to animals. They're defenseless, innocent creatures. Why would you be mean to them? Why would you hurt them or neglect them? I just don't get it. I hope Scott's going to say your leg is all right. Is your leg going to be all right? In Isleworth, so. southwest of London, like Anderson more? and Michael are very worried oh, about their youngest no. chihuahua, Leo. He's such a spoiled boy. While the 11-month-old puppy seems on the surface to be perfectly happy playing with his best mate, Isabella, his devoted owners have detected a limp developing in his back left leg. In my heart, step, you know, beating and saying, no, please, no, don't be anything serious. You know what you went through, hey? Oh, you don't want your brother to get sick, he's as well, no. Michael and Anderson have a very wrong. good reason to be protective. Are we okay to cut? Last year, Scott diagnosed their chihuahua Isabella with a heart condition that required major surgery, performed at the Royal Veterinary College. And while their little girl was fighting for her life, her brother Oscar was tragically killed after being run over by a car. Leo was a gift from friends to help them get over their loss. Leo, he's a, a ball of love. He filled a, a hole that we had in our heart, a big hole in our heart, and, uh, and he, he's just precious, really precious dog. X-rays have already been taken of Leo's hip and leg. Michael and Anderson will soon be heading off to see Scott to find out just what the X-rays reveal. We just thought, oh my gosh, we're really unlucky to be in this situation again. But we have to sort this out because we can see he's not well. 
fingers crossed, hopefully he'll come out of it without going through surgery or under the knife. Because I can't imagine going through, the, uh, through that whole procedure again, to tell the honest truth. Come on then, beautiful. Scans everyone. Scott has arrived at the Richmond practice with the shockingly malnourished rescue dog that he's decided to name Kylie. What's the matter with her? Well, it's a, it's a long list of ailments that little Carly's got going on, I'm afraid. It's so sad. You're in good hands now, little one. But the pint-sized Pomeranian is not the only special guest making an appearance today. Recently graduated vet Riaz is on his way to the practice for day one of his new career. I've been working for this for the last five years and now I can't wait to just get stuck in. Hey, Riaz. Hey, Scott. How you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. How good. are you? Good the rookie you, will be spending a four-month placement oh, at Scott's yeah. practice. Yeah. Five years. So and here's our consult room. Ah, oh, and it's Emma. Hi. Hello. This is our head nurse, Hi. Emma. Hi. Nice Riaz. to meet you. Nice to meet you. Riaz, new doing? grad. Fresh off the press. <laughs> How fresh are we talking? Oh, too fresh. Yeah, as in like a day fresh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Like yesterday. I'm glad the first person you met at the practice is our head nurse, because I would say, as a new grad, the person that you want to be besties with yeah. is definitely the head nurse. So, head vet, but you call the shots. Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. I'm glad we've established this hierarchy on day one. Get it right from the offset. From the very beginning. So, <laughs> you, scrubs, you downstairs and I'll bring the dog. What Riaz doesn't know is just how shocking his first case will be. I thought today that Kylie would really help to flex Riaz's veterinary muscles. So guys, meet Kylie. Oh my God. A baptism of fire to try and understand everything that's going wrong with this dog and what we can do to help her. Right, well let's get started then. Look how much hair she's lost. You can see right through to her skin and you shouldn't really be able to do that at all. We have virtually no history on this dog whatsoever, so we have to piece it together ourselves. When Scott told me there was no history, it was literally like a nightmare. I was like, oh, can't I just have an easy vaccination or something to do? But I'm happy to, to do that, so bring it on. We're gonna start at the front of you, little girl, and work our way back, eh? Here, little look inside. Oh, darling, you're missing quite a few teeth as well, aren't you? That's Oh, oh, it's skin's quite darker as well in patches. Yeah. She must be really itchy. This is clearly something which has, you know, not happened overnight. I've never seen anything like Kylie. I think she's the first and hopefully the last time I ever see anything like that. I mean, just looking at her tummy and her mammary glands here, oh. she's clearly had puppies. Well, you'll be horrified to know that just two days ago she uh, had a stillbirth at the kennels. She didn't. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Oh, mm-mm. Yeah. It's not fair, is it? When I heard that she'd lost a puppy, I, I lost it myself. I broke down. I don't know if it's a maternal feeling, woman to woman, but the thought of losing your baby in a stillbirth, um, just, it just made me feel for her. It's just not fair. So, Dr. Riaz, what do you think? I think what we should find out first is the skin problem, whether it is a simple skin problem, whether it's just a parasite or something like that, or there's an underlying cause, perhaps. I think we should start with some skin scrapes. Riaz is now carefully scraping away the top layer of Kylie's skin, trying to find evidence of the mites that are making her life a misery. Lovely. That's great. Good work. Good job. Good girl, honey. But the mites are notoriously elusive and can easily go undetected, even under a microscope. Where are you, little blighters? I'm in here somewhere. So guys, um, no mites found on this microscope slide. So what are we gonna think about that? The fact that we haven't found it doesn't rule it out. So I think what we should do in the meantime is start treating for the mites and perhaps run an additional test to confirm the presence of it, something like a blood test. Samples of Kylie's blood will now be sent away to the lab to confirm the team's clinical diagnosis. It seems to us that the biggest likelihood is that Kylie is suffering with mange. And the best way to kill off a mange mite is by giving the dog a bath and start helping Kylie to recover and grow that fur back. Now you've got to give a dog a bath. Um, a very technical job. <laughs> I'm very qualified for it, let's do it. Is 
Isabella, do you remember where you are? Michael and Anderson have now arrived at the St Margaret's practice in southwest London. Come on in, let's have a chat. Okay, okay thank you. Scott has examined Leo's x-rays, and the Chihuahua's owners are about to find out just what's wrong with their 11-month-old puppy. Unfortunately, I haven't got the greatest of news to deliver. Uh, you guys really know how to pick them. This guy has a condition called leg calf perthes disease. It's a mouthful, but it's a degenerative condition of his hip joint. All right. This is Leo on his back. This is his spine and his pelvis here. Now, on this side, you can see the whole section of that, the end of the femur, is a little bit longer. It's definitely abnormal. The shape isn't the classic ball. And what you can see is that big black dot yeah. in the middle there, which shows that already the femoral head is starting to collapse. It's starting to break down. And that's where the discomfort is coming from. Michael and Anson know me well enough to be able to read my face and straight away they're anxious and upset. Sometimes life is just so cruel. So his hip joint is no good, it's cactus. So his hip joint is no good, it's cactus. And it will only continue to get worse, I'm afraid. The At St Margaret's, grim, Scott's unluckiest the, clients, yeah, Michael and Anderson, really have just been to. given the yeah, terrible yeah. news their 11-month-old puppy, Leo, has a serious problem with his hip. It's such an extraordinary run of bad luck for these guys. They've had a dog that needed heart surgery. They've had a dog that was cruelly ripped from them as it got hit by a car. And now Leo has got a hip that's got some major problems with it. I mean, it's just so cruel. What is the procedure now? Sadly, the only way to fix this is surgery. Oh, I think I wasn't expecting that at all. No, it wasn't something we were expecting. I thought something is small, we can sort it here now and then. And you have to go through the knife. Well, there's two very clear options surgically. Uh, one is something that I can do, which is removal of the femoral head and neck. And what it leads to is a free floating leg, which sounds crazy because you think you've got to have a joint, but uh, little dogs like this, they're very nimble, they're very light, and they can actually work very well with no hip joint. And it's the hip joint itself that's causing the pain in Leo, and that would be removed. The gold standard, however, is something called a total hip replacement. It is placing a false ball and a false socket into his hip and completely replacing the degenerate one that he's got. Now that's unfortunately not something that I can do. It's highly specialized, particularly in a little dog like him. It's not very good news to hear that you have a little baby, such a small baby, has to go through it, unfortunately. And which, in your opinion, would be the better option? Well, guys, I'd say the gold standard, I think, is going and getting the total hip replacement. It's a massive surgery, but I think the benefits afterwards are considerable. And the fact that he is such a young dog and he's probably got a good 15 years to live, I think it's a, a worthy gamble. A worthy gamble. I think we've got no choice but go for the better option. Mm -hmm. Surgery again. Okay, yeah. I think we're gonna do the surgery, Scott. Leo will now be referred to Scott's orthopedic specialist surgeon, Michael Hamilton. To hear about a total hip replacement, they're very concerned, but I think they're also resolute. They want the best for Leo and they're willing to hold his little paw through it. Now, now we have to see Mike. It's gonna oh, be a big be okay. surgery. Oh God. I know. Come on. Then. At Richmond, Kylie's rehabilitation is about Hi, to begin. Honey. Are we ready for your bath? The little rescue I dog know. was found Come starving on. with a shocking Come skin on. condition, which oh, is making no. her life an itchy hell. Oh, yeah. oh, I know. There she is, the star of the show. I never New saw her. New vet Rhea suspects mange mites are the reason for her hair loss. 
So he oh, and right. Emma are about to give there Kylie a strong don't chemical say. bath to there fight the parasites. We don't know yet if we're treating for which type of mange, so we're just going to hit it hard. So I'm just going to not get her face too much. This bath is not the nicest thing. We're dressed up in masks and gloves because it's pretty strong stuff, and poor girl has just stood there taking it. So what we'll do with the rest of it is just sponge it on a little bit. You get free tummy rubs, hey? <laughs> hey, gorgeous. The way this works is it will kill the bugs from the outside and hopefully make her feel a lot less itchy, and she can start to grow some of this hair back. If it is just some bugs on the surface, then we should start seeing some progress in the next few weeks with regards to her hair coming back. I never thought that I'd get such an interesting, a bit of bizarre case as I have today. And with me, your first nurse. That's true. How does it feel to take... No, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> your nursing virginity. <laughs> I can't wait to see her full of hair again. I bet she's gorgeous. Riaz is oh, just lovely. relieved all of Kylie's problems can be fixed. It will be several days before blood test results will confirm just what type of mange is afflicting Kylie. There you go. All right, hey, honey. Gorgeous. But for now, this lucky survivor will return to the care of rescuer Sonia. All right then, honey. She'll build up the malnourished dog's strength and get Kylie ready for a loving new home. Say thanks, Riaz. Bye, gorgeous. <laughs> You're going <laughs> to sleep well, aren't you? You'll never forget your first sort of patient, regardless of what it is. I think I'll remember Kylie forever. All right, honey. Get you some dinner. Should I get you some dinner? <laughs> Later that week, Michael arrives at Scott's referral hospital for Leo's total hip replacement. Hey. Weighing That's just over talking. five pounds, yes. the Chihuahua will be one of the smallest dogs to undergo the major surgery. I'm imagining the implant being so tiny and his bones being so small and then cutting that bone of his to put that implant. It's a bit overwhelming. While Michael's trying hard to be stoic, little Leo's doing his best tough guy impersonation. Leo, every time he sees a dog, he just explodes. Shush. It's like a little monster that comes out. Hello, Leo. This is Leo. How are you today? <laughs> he seems pretty chipper, doesn't he? Yes. Scott has referred Leo to orthopaedic specialist surgeon Michael Hamilton. So you have standard hip replacement, which yes. is kind of uh, Labradors, German Shepherds, oh, yeah. that kind of thing, which is this kind of size, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And then they developed micro hip replacement, oh, and now they've got nano hip nano. replacement. Oh, okay. He's That's a, what the nano he's a <laughs> nano. He's a nano total hip replacement. Yeah. Oh shit! The plan is that he's going to have a plastic on metal hip with no pain, with a normal range of motion and he's going to be running around as a, as a normal dog. So that's, that's what we were that's, uh, hoping that's, for, That's yes. the whole point. Let's go do a nano hip replacement. Let's do Okay, it. Yes. right, follow me. It's going to be really stressful until I get the call from Michael saying that the surgery's been all OK. There you go. You want to give your daddy a kiss? Um, there you go. Good luck. There we go. Right then. Michael, we'll speak later on. All right. OK, I'll right, OK. Don't worry, we'll speak to you soon. Thank you very much. Come on then, you. Let's get you sorted out. As Leo is prepped for his operation by nurses Kim and Claire, Good boy. Surgeon Michael knows this is going to be a challenging day. The thing about Leo's hip replacement is he's tiny. There's very little room for error here. So the, the adrenaline right now is, is, is pumping. Michael is now taking further x-rays to be absolutely sure just how much space there is for the hip implant. X-rays. He's worried even the smallest nano implant may not fit into Leo's tiny hip joint. The smallest one that they make, which is what we've got, is 10, and that measures 10. So it's a bit of a no-brainer in terms of selection of implant size. As, as expected, given these two kilos, it, it's, it's the smallest one they make, and he's right on the edge, right on the edge. Like I said, they measure, this measures 10, it's 10 millimetres. 
it's going to be on the wire. All right, Jem, here's Carol. There's a lot of cat baskets in there. Oh, my God, there's another she's, one. She's brought the whole team. That's always all worth. Scotland's nurse Gemma oh, are sorry, also yeah, about to start well, yes. a challenging day. Who's back here, Carol? George and Harry. I'm not George sure. George and to Harry. Oh, it's good to see the brothers together again. Carol right. is one of the local area's most colourful characters. Say so who's this? Oh, you've got the heavy one. You've got oh, Harry. Oh. He weighs a ton. <laughs> you me. You're a big boy. Carol is definitely a crazy cat lady. All right, Carol, you better come in now. But she's fabulous. I really like her. There we are. Somebody say I'm, I'm a mad cat lady, but I'm not. I just adore cats. And that's it. I'm a cat person. And that's it, really. Turkish vans aren't known to be shy and retiring. And generally, she always brings in at least two. And today, she brought in four. So I knew it was going to be a handful. We'll weigh them all, and then we'll go through all their individual maladies, shall we? Carol has brought in Jess. Harry, Pixie, William Harry. and George Hello, for their mate. regular Hello, health checks. Hello, mate. Let's pop you on the scale. Oh, you are a lump, aren't you? She's well. Yes. Ooh, 8.75 kilograms. Ooh. <laughs> Someone's been eating well, haven't they? I did think you were heavy when I carried you. He was you. quite a big kid. Oh, right. Oh, OK, right. we'll put it down to that, shall Thank we? Yes, OK, yes, he was a very big kid. He was quite a big <laughs> Yes, definitely big bone. Yes. <laughs> So who's this beautiful one? Right, then? this is Pixie. Oh, I think similarly afflicted like her brother <laughs> with the chubby tummy. You know, I had to keep thinking of different words to describe heavy. There was a bit of hefty, there was a bit of chubby, there was a bit of cuddly, uh, but some of them were quite weighty. There's another one. Come on, what William. kind of character is William? He's not feisty like the others. 4.9, so he's much more the weight that I would expect and hope for. So. All right, then, last but not least, Carol, okay, let's get George out. Good boy, George. All right, George, good there we go. Boy. Good boy. It's now time to get down to business. And first so, up is a much-needed manicure for a very grumpy George. Some weapons oh. right there. All right, mate, all right. God, he's strong. Oh, for a fluffy white cat that looks beautiful, wow, he really does pack a punch. <laughs> Marlo. Right, we're going in. Specialist orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton is about to start a total hip replacement on Tiny Leo. The Chihuahua weighs just over five pounds, making him the smallest patient Michael's ever performed this major surgery on. This is what we hope is going to fit in, but at the measurements, it's right on the limit. So um, it's going to be really, really tight. OK, so let's, uh, let's go 11 scalpel. Okay. Yeah, okay, right, so we're off. So it's not going to be very far in on this titchy little thing. The first step of the surgery is straightforward. Get into the hip joint and remove the degenerative femoral head that's been causing Leo so much pain. So there you go. That's what we've cut off. So we've taken the femoral head and a little bit of the femoral neck here as well. The new femoral head looks a bit smaller. So this is, this is grossly misshapen. It's almost went from a circle, which would have been a similar size to that. It's kind of kind of shortened and flattened and kind of splurged out a little. It looks more like, looks more like a mushroom. Step two requires ultimate patience. Michael now has to painstakingly enlarge the minute socket area to make just enough room for the equally small implant. For this doll, because it's so, so small and so delicate, we aren't going to be putting any reamers on power tools and press and go, because within half a second, you could have no bone left. So that's, that's not what we're going to do here. Uh, what we are going to do is we're going to use a little, a little spinal burr. And we're going to use that a bit like a paintbrush and just remove the bone bit by bit by bit by bit. Ooh, it's tight. It's really, really tight. So we've just got to be very, very careful. The worry is we might run out of bone. If we go right the way to the sides, that's game over. God, he's strong. Oh, 
All right, mate. Let's Back start. at Isleworth, the struggle is continuing for Scott and Gemma as they try to finish Feisty George's unwanted manicure. I'm exhausted and we've only done one cat. I know, I know. Not even finished the first one. Carol has brought in not one, but four of her Turkish van cats for top-to-tail health checks. Now, Gemma, you can let the cat go. that. Oh, well done. It was absolutely crazy in that consult room. So what does Pixie need? She needs claws clip, please. Are you oh, sorry? Are you in manicures and cats? Honestly. It's not manicures, it's saving my hands. I don't... <laughs> well, it's not saving mine. Every time you come from now on, any Maybe nurse, this, any wait. nurse that's been misbehaving, they have to clip your cat's nails as like a sort oh, of a penance. Oh, no. Oh, that's, isn't it? Isn't that wicked? Really mean? Isn't yes. that mean? Yes. yes, it's not. Well, interestingly, you're here right now, so um, you can tell who's <laughs> been the bad girl of the month, don't you? I am not a bad girl. Right. <laughs> OK, uh, there we go. Here Good. Go. All right, so who's next? While Harry's about to have his manicure, George is on the prowl, looking for his favourite chew toy. No, no, no. The Look. telephone wires. Cannot chew wires, especially in the vets. I haven't got a landline now. Three times he's chewed through the wire. Get out! Look, Uncle Scott won't like you if you chew his wire. Go away! <laughs> Go away! <laughs> Fuck it! No wire! Ah, oh, well, at least veterinary work is fun, isn't it? Hey? <laughs> Who can say it isn't a laugh? Oh, dear. <laughs> Where's William? There, look! William's in the sink. Oh, William's in the sink. What I think we need to do now, let's put the other three to bed. And let's just keep William. Right. And then um, I think we all need a drink. There you go. All right? Look here, George, you can come out later if you're going to be a good boy. I know you're going to whinge, but just try and be a good boy for five whole minutes. With George behind bars, it's timid William's turn. So he's coming today for his teeth, hasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. I think William holds a special place in Carol's heart. She's had him for 12 years, so, yeah, there's definitely a connection there. It's a mummy's boy, aren't you? It's all right. He sits next to me, he sits across me sometimes. He always likes to see where I am. We can't let that dopey George come on, will we? No, we won't. You can sit with me. He's my boy. Yeah, just a little bit more than the others. Good boy. I know you're going to be worried, because I know that, you know, we haven't had much luck of late. Just, just a little bit, so yeah. I should be on tender hooks with him. You know, Carol's a very strong lady, but she's very worried today, particularly as recently she had quite a heartbreak in that one of her other cats, Betty Boop, died under anaesthetic. Well, Betty Boop, we lost. I wasn't prepared for that. Yeah, she was a little stray, I found. She was, she was curled up in the corner by the front door, ever so wet and thin, so I brought her in and she stayed. And I tell you what, the other cats, they won't eat much. It's kind of going and going to morning. It's really strange. Good boy, yeah. I can only imagine how Carol must have felt at losing her beloved Betty Boop. Dental procedures, we do them all the time, they're routine, but it's the anaesthetic that's the risk. And even with everyone's best efforts, sometimes tragedy can strike and it's heartbreaking. Don't worry, quite safe. It's like wafer thin now, I can't go any further, otherwise I'm gonna go through. So that's, that's it, that's as far as we can go. Orthopaedic surgeon Michael Hamilton has reached the crucial stage of Leo the Chihuahua's total hip replacement. So i just got to go for it now and hope it's good. Leo weighs just over five pounds and is the smallest dog Michael has ever performed this operation on. That's the socket there. The specialist is now carefully positioning a new nano polyethylene plastic hip socket inside the tiny dog. If I move now as the cement starts to set, we're going to lose some of the bonding that we've got. But I think that looks, from here, quite good. Right. Next, the diseased head of Leo's femur will be replaced by a new metal ball. If the prosthetic implants fit precisely, they should work as effectively as a normal, healthy joint. We're basically trying to make a hole inside the bone for this to fit with a little bit of cement around it. But the fragility of Leo's tiny bone is making Michael very nervous. I can see this thing moving around inside the bone. Wow, that is getting really thin. If we go too far, we break the bone and we're a lot worse off than we were before we started. So, yeah, that's a real kind of uh, edgy seat time. Oh, not quite. Tight. 
Do you know what? I need another millimeter. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> this is so, so tight. <sighs> So but basically, what I'm doing, I, I, I just keep putting this thing back in because if this thing fits, we're good. And I think that actually good. is pretty good. We've got this implant now to fit, so this is it. We've just got to now cement this thing in. Go, 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 go. Michael is using a medical cement, which is a mixture of powder and liquid and contains antibiotics. There's actually a very small window of when that cement is easy to work with and actually going to be effective to use. That You've got to put it in there and get your implant in, and then once you're happy, you've got to just stay put. Because if you start moving around as the cement starts to set, you're just going to debond the thing from the cement and it's just not going to work. Very, 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 very careful. <laughs> right. So this is the actual implant. In she goes. And I need to just try and make sure that that is lined up. She's in. She's in. The fact that she's in is... Good. ...is pretty damn good, I have to say. <laughs> Whew. That, I think, is probably one of the fiddliest stops I've ever done. And that feels pretty good. Let's go x-ray, see what it's like. This is now the, the really stressful way for orthopaedic surgeons because there's, there's no hiding place on the x-rays, you know? I mean, worst case scenario, this hip might have popped out. That would be a total disaster and I'll be, I'll be crying. We need to get one of those. X-rays. Fingers crossed. This view here is for us to assess the way that the stem sits in the middle of the femur, and it's, it's, it's really good. It's really good. Uh, it's in the middle. It's in for a start, so that makes me happy. Yeah, happy with that. Always oh, been such a brave little fella. You've got you a lovely soft bed for the night. So go. for now, Michael is satisfied, but Leo is not out of danger yet. He will need constant supervision and cage rest for the next month to make sure the new implant stays in place while the soft tissues heal and the muscle mass around it increases. One attempted jump onto the bed and, you know, that hip could be not where it should be and would be quite easy to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory here. You've got a new hip, mate. You're really lucky. Hey, it's a good boy. You wouldn't be a Turkish van without a little bit of a fight, would you, eh? Hey? No. At Isleworth, Scott and Gemma are feeling more pressure than usual as they prepare William for his dental procedure. Good boy, I know. They're well aware that William's owner, Carol, is still grieving for another of her beloved cats that died under anaesthetic only a week ago. There's always trepidation with any anaesthetic and a 12-year-old cat even more so. But then when you've got an owner, who is so frightened that she's gonna lose her cat under an anaesthetic. It adds that little element of nerves. I was watching William like a hawk. Breathing okay, heart rate okay? Yeah. All good. I like the name William for a cat. Yeah? Yeah. My brother's called William. Is he a Will or William He's or a Will. Billy? He's a Will. He's a Will. He can be a bit of a Willy at times though. <laughs> can he? Okay. There we go. All right, so let's just flip him over. So far, everything's going according to plan. Oh, that's a shame. Just as we get near the end. Until Scott discovers some decaying teeth that need to come out. Oh, come on. I'm really playing hard to get this tooth. To remove these sort of teeth in an older cat, they're actually attached by bone to the jaw. And you have to put quite a bit of force to get them out. And I've known some vets have been very unfortunate and actually broken the cat's jaw whilst doing it. So. Well, we don't want that to happen for Carol's baby, do we? She'd probably break my jaw if I did. I think she would. <laughs> <laughs> it's always great working with Gem. She's a great girl. She's always good fun and she absolutely loves her job. All right, so that's it. You can turn him off. And she's really dedicated to the animals. And so, you know, working with her is always a joy and uh, we always tend to get a really good result. 
It's got this brush you've given me. It's like for hamsters or something. I thought it was for your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> Good job you didn't say my moustache. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you, um, your beard is very well kept. <gasps> You're so naughty. I want to say bad words to you. <laughs> Scott likes to take the mick, but um, I think I give it back as, as good as he gives it. <laughs> Waking up, mate. Hmm? And just when Scott is convinced there will be no more problems, William has one last shock in store. Come on, wakey, wakey. Rise and shine. He's taking a long time to wake up. In the back of my mind, remembering Carol's concern, it just made me a little bit more concerned than maybe I normally would be. Come on. Come on, William. Come on. Come back to us. Starting to worry about just how long it's taking the elderly William to wake up after his dental procedure. Come on, mate. Come back to us. Only a week ago, one of owner Carol's other members of her huge cat family passed away while under anaesthetic. Come on, William. Under anaesthetic, they can just simply die. A 12-year-old cat, even more so. But then remembering Carol's concern, he was going to wake up whether we liked it or not. Come on, mate. Come on, there we go. Now we're thinking about it, aren't we? Hey, so we get to a little bed. Yeah. Oh, shaky head. Come on, big boy. Here we go. William gave us maybe a smidge of a scare that he took quite a long time to wake up, but he did come right eventually and we're able to then send him home to his beloved Carol. Hello. Hello. I've come for William. Later that afternoon, that Carol you? arrives with another Sky. fluffy Sky. member oh, of her hello, white beautiful. furry family. Wait, oh, look, who's this? This is Sky. Oh, look, it's William in dog form. That's it. So your buddy, do you love your pussy cats? Hey. I absolutely adore my cats. They're part of the family. Yeah. With the odd dog as well. We would have a dog. We would have the dog with the cats. He's been a very, very good boy. Hello. Hello my His darling. mama. He's absolutely fine, so it's brilliant. Yes, got my boy back, so yeah. Time to go, mate. Good boy, yeah, he's out of here. Caring for people's precious pets is a massive responsibility, and I do take that very seriously. But there is a little sense of relief when you can hand a healthy pet back into the arms of a beloved owner. Job done. There you go, cat. And dog. And dog. Thank you. Thank you All very right. much. Come on, Sky. Thanks. Bye, girls. Bye, bye. bye boys. Come See you on, later. Sky. Come on, Mind step. Hey, Maya. Where's your friend Leo? Where is he? There he is. Two days after Leo's nerve-wracking hip replacement, the tiny chihuahua is at home with his surgeon, Michael Hamilton. The specialist is giving him round-the-clock supervision before returning the dog to his owners. It's a bit of a one-off, to be honest with you, but um, he's, he's the smallest hip replacement that we've done, and um, I, I just wanted to really, really keep a close eye on him in the, in, for the first couple of days. Michael's dog, Sausage and Bumble, are not impressed with the house guest. It's your little friend. Oh, but one-year-old Maya is besotted. Oh, gently, gently. My God, two babies to look after at the same time. Crikey. He's had a major operation and he's got better extension and is less painful than he was pre-op already. So, you know, I'm really pleased. Go say hello to Maya. There we go. Are you going to miss him when he goes home? Are you going to miss him? Oh. But while Maya won't be happy about losing her new buddy, that afternoon Leo's relieved owner Anderson can't wait to see his little boy. Excuse me. Hello, hello Michael. Sir. Hello, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. How do you do? Oh, hello. Okay, here he is. Here hello. Is. Can I? Can I? Sorry. Easy, oh, come to daddy. Come here. There we go. Yeah. Come to daddy. <laughs> yeah. He's missed yeah. you. It's been terrible. This morning at 7 o'clock, I was awake and waiting for time to come here. <laughs> I miss you so much, my little one. Yeah, you're going home now. So he's been at our house the last two nights. You know, he's been getting wet on hand and foot. Anderson walks in and it's literally just, uh, I'll see you later. It's quite funny. <laughs> While the hip replacement is working so far, 
Michael wants to ensure Leo's handled with kid gloves for at least the next six weeks. The most important thing is rest. Okay. And we don't want to be charging around off lead because if he does that, potentially things can move around and we can get a problem. If he's good at six weeks, I'll be pretty happy. And then as his exercise increases and he's off lead at 12 weeks and I get a video of him flying around off lead, then, I, then I'll relax. Okay. All the best. Okay, you take, take care. Out. Take it easy. <laughs> See you, Leo. Let's see Daddy and Isabella. Yeah, they are waiting for you. Yeah, they are waiting for you, my little. Let's go home. See, Isabella, where are you? Let's go. Yeah. Kylie, well done. Look at you. Well done. Hello, Sonia. Stop. Oh my God, Hi. Kylie! It's been five weeks since Scott first met I'm Kylie. Good. You look incredible. Doesn't she? She's an absolute vision, isn't she? She looks fantastic. Did you recognise her? Hardly. <laughs> well, first of all, she's got hair. Mm. <laughs> it's incredible. This was how the Pomeranian looked when Scott first saw her at the rescue shelter. Severely underweight and without most of her hair. Who would let their dog? turn into this. Into I mean, it's stage. disgusting. The little girl was treated for mange mites, and she's now fully recovered and sporting a whole new look. Hair she's on like, the face. Look, look at me. Look at me. Her Hair legs. on the legs. Hair on the tail. Look at that. Carly looks absolutely amazing. I can't believe this is the same dog. She looks beautiful. The blood tests Amazing. have shown Kylie was under attack oh, from the debilitating sarcoptic so mange, better known as fox mange. I think what the irony is here is that she had fox mange mm. and now she looks like and a fox. you look like a fox. <laughs> Don't you? You look like little foxy. Hey? Foxy Kylie. Kylie is just loving the attention and she deserves it. So I say, go Kylie. <laughs> It won't be long now before Sonia will reluctantly allow the little Pomeranian to leave her care and go to a forever home. She's just st still there to be loved and to give love. Beautiful foxy Kylie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. Go, 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 go. There's also good news for Leo. 12 weeks after his hip replacement surgery, the Chihuahua is finally allowed to run free in the park with his sister, Isabella. Hey, Leo. Where's your ball? Leo's doing really well. We're really happy with the outcome of the surgery. Fit, fit, fit. It's fit, a relief fit. for devoted owners, Michael and Anderson, who have endured two tough years with their pets. No more surgeries, no more nothing. Touch uh, wood. Touch wood, <laughs> yes. Because the thing is... It's a bit too much. <laughs> for the last two years, it's been a living nightmare. And now, hopefully, it just just Maybe be just happy happiness. days. Happiness. <laughs> just happy days from now on. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> hello there, gents. This is a happy oh, scene. Good to oh, see yes, you. Scott. Hello, puppies. Come here. How are you, Leo? Leo is dancing away, chasing balls with Isabella. It's a massive difference from the last time I saw Leo. Boy. Where he was constantly lifting his leg up, he was in pain, but now Leo is walking comfortably and beautifully in the park. Okay, let's have a little look at him, shall we? Yeah. Hello, mate. Oh, that's good extension. It feels beautifully smooth, it's moving well, and all the muscles and support tissues around that hip are doing very well, so it's a really good result. Where's Leo, watch. There he is. Should we watch him walk? And there's two other people who are thrilled with Leo's progress. His surgeon, Michael, and the Chihuahua's number one fan, Maya. He's got a new hip. Yeah, there he is. Ah, He was your little friend. Do you remember him? Love. Love. Yes. Oh, happiness. All happiness, yeah. no more surgery. Yeah. Guys, agreed? No more surgery. <laughs> I think it's a resounding yes. <laughs> <laughs>